St. Elizabeth Van Seton, Behold, a wise woman who has built her house. She feared the Lord and walked in the right path. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We welcome you today. As we today we celebrate St. Elizabeth Ann Seton. If you've ever had any treatment from Sisters Hospital, that's the order that came to Buffalo. And so Sister St. Elizabeth Ann Seton is so, so central to the health care of the Buffalo area. The first hospital formed when Bishop Tymon became Bishop of the area at First Bishop. He knew that we needed health care. And he went down to the Sisters of Charity in Amitsburg, um, Maryland, in order to ask for their assistance to come here. And by the grace, that order sent several sisters here. I believe there was eight that came to Buffalo to form the community um, and form the hospital here. The order was selected because they could deal with Protestant and Catholic um, religions together. Not all religious communities could do that at that time. And Bishop Timon wanted to make sure that the needs of the area were well served. So today we celebrate the foundress of the order that runs Sisters Hospital. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who crowned with the gift of true faith, St. Elizabeth Ann Seton's burning zeal to find you, grant by her intercession and example that we may always seek you with diligent love, and find you in daily service with sincere faith. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, we receive from him whatever we ask because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And his commandment is this, we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. Those who keep his commandments remain in him and he in them. And the way we know that he remains in us is from the spirit whom he gave us. Beloved, do not trust every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they belong to God. Because many false prophets have gone out into this world. This is how you can know the spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges Jesus Christ come in the flesh, belongs to God. And every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus does not belong to God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, who, as you heard, is to come, but in fact is already in the world. You belong to God, children, and you have conquered them. For the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. They belong to the world. Accordingly, their teaching belongs to the world, and the world listens to them. We belong to God, and anyone who knows God listens to us, while anyone who does not belong to God refuses to hear us. This is how we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of deceit. The word of the Lord. I will give you all the nations for an inheritance. I will give you all the nations for an inheritance. The Lord said to me, you are my son. This day I have begotten you. 
Ask of me, and I will give you the nation's foreign inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. I will give you all the nation's foreign inheritance. And now, O kings, give heed. Take warning, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice before him with trembling rejoice. I will give you all the nations for an inheritance. Please stand. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and went to live in Capernaum by the sea in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali, that what had been said through Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, the way to the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sit in darkness have seen a great light. On those dwelling in a land overshadowed by death, light has arrived. From that time on, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He went around all of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and curing every disease and illness among the people. His fame spread to all of of Syria, and they brought to him all who were sick with various diseases and racked with pain. Those who were possessed lunatics and paralytics, and he cured them. And great crowds from Galilee, the Decapolis, Jerusalem, and Judea, and from beyond the Jordan followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. That first reading today from the first letter of St. John, it speaks of of a beautiful way to begin a week. Because it starts off, we receive from him whatever we ask. And then it continues because we follow his commandments and we live in his love and we offer that love. But what a beautiful message to hear. We receive from him whatever we ask. We're not outsiders at all. We're in the inner circle with Christ. And Christ will be with us whenever we struggle, whenever we're victorious. But he leads us forward. And so whatever's on our mind today, that's what we need to do. Ask. Ask him for help. Ask him for ways to give you patience. Ask him for ways to help you forgive. Ask him for ways to allow you to be kind when you don't feel like it or you're tired because it's a, it's a cloudy day or a rainy day. Ask him how you should be when it comes to a new year when you're worried about the future. Ask him for help when you need to go to the hospital to visit someone or to call someone on the phone you don't want a difficult call. In fact, I had a call last week that I had to make and I started off, I typed the numbers into the phone and then I said an Our Father and a Hail Mary before I pressed the enter button. (laughs) But I did that because I wanted the words to go on my lips, that I could speak good words, not be nervous, and just ask. And you know what, it went fine. But it's such a calming way of entering into that relationship with our Lord. And that's what he's telling us by the joy of our first reading from from the first letter of John. Ask and you will receive. We'll hear it all throughout the scriptures. The epiphany is special because it's these three kings or the magi that come from distant lands. And they are invited to meet Christ. And so it speaks of God coming for all the nations, not for a privileged class but for the whole world, even when we're down and out and we don't feel he should be coming to us, he's still coming to us anyway with a saving message. So we hear today's gospel to speak of the joy of Christ in the world, not for a select few, 
but for all of these regions, all of these towns, all of these areas. And they bring their sick, they bring their well, they bring the people that have needs, they bring those that, that need help, and Jesus is there for them. If Jesus is for there for them in our gospel, he most certainly is there for us. So today as we begin the day, ask the Lord what's on your mind. Have a real deep conversation with him. But know the words of the scripture. We receive from him whatever we ask. And it's because we follow his commandments. We're faithful to him and he's faithful back to us. May we enter into this last week before the baptism of our Lord when these kings are following that star and they found it. And may we find God himself in this Mass and also in our prayer life. Please rise now for the intercessions. As one voice, we confidently bring our needs to the Father who gives us his light and his saving grace in Christ. For leaders in the church, leaders in our families, leaders in our community, may the Holy Spirit strengthen all of us in our ministry with God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For public authorities, may the light of Christ illumine their decisions and lead them to protect those who are most in need. We pray to the Lord. For all who are sick or suffering, for those that um, grieve the loss of another, for all those on our parish sick list, all those that respond and are first responders and help people in need, for all the ways in which we're caregivers, may Christ's healing presence bring all the ill relief and consolation and help us in our brokenness. We pray to the Lord. For all of us gathered here and participating through the internet, may we be comforted in our worries by the abiding peace of Christ, and may 2021 be a year of great peace in our lives. We pray to the Lord. For those who have died, today we remember in a special way Thomas E. Bauer, pray for the whole Bauer family, and also Rick Stoddard, pray for the whole Stoddard family, and for Tom and Rick and all the faithful departed. May they rest in the eternal light of God's love and God's grace and God's peace. And may we meet again. We pray to the Lord. And for those prayers that we voice now in the silence of our hearts. And we ask these prayers through the intercession of St. Joseph. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, you gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to us is our light and our salvation and our Redeemer. Hear our prayers we offer today in his holy name, and we ask this all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Amen. 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all, his holy church. O Lord, we ask that you look graciously upon these gifts placed on your altar in celebration of St. Elizabeth Ann Seton and grant by the power at work in this sacrifice that we may be more deeply inserted into the mystery of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations, and when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Zion of the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Zion of the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. In our own indirect way, let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
our prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul, since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. I am the living bread from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. The bread that I shall give is my flesh for the life of the world. Let us pray. As we partake of the sacrament of our salvation, we, while recalling the memory of St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, we humbly ask you, O Lord, that we may be inflamed with a burning desire for the heavenly table and by its power consecrate our life faithfully to you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.